Hi, and welcome to Formation, an exciting new tool from PySource. Formation is all about making web forms do more. In this video, we will walk through installing Formation, configuring AAMP to use it, and then finally, we'll build a form with Formation and send its data to a popular CRM system so you can see how quickly we can be up and running. All right, let's begin. We're going to first navigate to our vanilla instance of AEM. I'll log in as admin and go to tools. And tools, we're going to reach CRXDE so we can go to the package manager. This is where we'll upload Formation's software. Now let's find it in our drive. Our mission. Okay. And install. So you'll note, this is the only thing that we need to install. And we're ready to configure. So let's go back to AM Admin and refresh our tools. And you'll notice here at the bottom, once we've refreshed, there's a new tool, it's PySource. That gives us access to formations set up. We just need two things. We need a project. So let's go to We Retail. The project path determines the topmost level from which we want to access form controls. And next, we need a service to connect to. HubSpot, MailChimp, Salesforce, and Campaign. As you can see, they each have their own configuration. Today we'll choose HubSpot. So we enable HubSpot. I happen to have an API key copied to the clipboard, so I'm going to paste it here. And setup is complete. Now what we need to do is enable a template to receive form controls from formation. So we're going to templates, we retail, which is our project. The content page seems a good place. We need to update the layout container to receive PySource form controls. So we go into the policy. As we scroll down the set of options, we'll find PySource formation hasn't been checked, so let's check it. And to avoid confusion, I'm going to uncheck We Retail Forms so we don't end up with duplicates. And you note, Formation's components are now available. So we are ready to build pages. So let's go back to the top and admin and look for sites. And in sites, let's go to our site. And let's create a page here at the uh, root level. Based on the content page template that we just modified, Let's give it a friendly name. My formation. And let's go there. We confirm that our components are present. Let's get rid of this breadcrumb we're not going to use. And for this, we need a form container that will contain all the input fields. And uh, let's say we're starting a newsletter and we need subscribers. So let's uh, give a prompt over here to let people know. For that, we use a form label. And then we go to the wrench. And let's start typing. Sign up for our newsletter. Newsletters are having a moment now, it seems, so it's a good thing we're getting in on the ground floor. So for this, let's say we want to pick up a first name and last name and an email address at least, so we can reach out to our friend. And of course, we'll need a submit button of some kind, so let's submit. It's even styled already. 
Okay, let's configure it. You'll notice that common field types are already pre-populated here for your convenience. Uh, name is pretty much a text field, so we're going to leave it alone. And then let's give it a name. Again, these are pre-populated with common field names. First name. We could override that label right here, and we'll do that uh, a little later. Let's make it required here in the Constraints tab, and let's give it an appropriate error message. And you notice that there's a flag over here indicating to the user that a field is required, so no surprises there. Again, last name is a text type. Uh, but let's call it family name and see how that changes things. We'll make it required. So it's a type email, and I'll be validated as email rather than just plain text. And again, here's the uh, friendly name. Make it required, otherwise we can't reach back to our friend. And enter a helpful error message. Please enter a valid email address. You can't just enter any old thing here now. Oh no, the last thing we need to do is we need to give the form somewhere to submit. Submits to HubSpot since we just set that up. We also need to give the form an ID so that it can be differentiated among any multiple forms you might have in a page. So let's just say since this is our first one, my formation one. Friendly name is always helpful. Let's say this was a success. Okay, so now we're done. Now let's preview it and try to subscribe a new person. Let's say our friend Art Vandele wants to subscribe. All right, let's just see if um, HubSpot received our new information. So I have the, happen to have the control panel open over here from, from my account HubSpot. And uh, if all goes well, we should see our new user added right above John Public here. So we refresh, and there's Art Vandelay. Hey, Art. Along with the email address that we sent out. And you'll see there's plenty of data points that you could be adding to any of your forms here, uh, but we have chosen to keep things simple for this example. And that's how easy it is to build a form using formation. I've been Ariel. Thank you for joining me.